With everyone nowadays carrying around an extremely accurate GPS device at all times, more and more data comes with spatial tags that associate that data with a place on the Earth. GPS location information can be very accurate, with resolutions down to a meter. Even if a device doesn't have GPS, it's still possible to infer general location information, for example triangulating mobile phone towers, Wi-Fi signals, or even from user-supplied tags. One example, which we see a lot of in this course, is geotag social media posts. Clicking this button while making a tweet allows you to add location information metadata to your post. Weather data is obviously another type of spatial data that you might encounter. Lots of other data can have a spatial component. For example, this map shows World Bank data on the total expenditure on healthcare paid for out of pocket. By computing the same statistic in many countries, we generate a spatial data set. As a final example, here's a crowdsourced map of reptile observations in the UK. While there's a lot of data here, it's kind of hard to interpret. This underlines the importance of data visualization for spatial data. There are probably interesting patterns in the distribution of UK reptiles, but we can't really tell what they are from this map. Here's an example from my own work. People tweet about many things, including the weather, and there's quite a large field dedicated to collecting and processing social media data for use by emergency responders or weather forecasters. These are the GPS coordinates that locate the tweet. When someone tweets, my garden is flooded, if that tweet is geotagged, we know which garden is flooded. And by combining thousands of these messages, we can build up a picture of how floods are affecting the country. Compared to the reptile map, the scale is much bigger. This map uses English counties instead of small grid squares. There's also a colour scheme called a chloropleth to indicate where there are more observations and where there are fewer. Then, instead of a simple pop-up, there's a whole panel where you can read the original tweets. Producing maps like this is the bread and butter of spatial data analysis. Not all spatial data comes as nicely formatted GPS coordinates. Here's the University of Exeter's Twitter bio. There is location information here too. We have the free text location field with Exeter, Devon, UK written in it, but there are other location indicators as well. The .ac.uk domain name strongly implies that this is an organisation located in the UK. By combining many of these location indicators, we can identify with confidence where the University of Exeter is located. We wouldn't want to confuse it with Exeter in Ontario, Canada, for example, or the famous Exeter School in New Hampshire. By combining the different indicators in social media posts or any documents, they can often be located reasonably precisely. Figuring out how to map free text into coordinates is one of the challenging aspects of spatial data analysis. When working with spatial data, especially spatial data tied to real people, issues of privacy and GDPR are critical. Each specific case should be carefully considered as to what type of spatial data analysis is and isn't allowed. For this, you're going to want to look at the platform's terms of service, which spell out what people agree to when they provide the data and what the platform allows you to do with it, as well as relevant legislation like GDPR. I should briefly mention GIS, or Geographic Information Systems. Geographic Information Systems are designed to capture, store and process geographic and spatial information. These are often fairly specialised software packages designed for use by planners, engineers or weather forecasters who might need things like detailed topographic information overlaid on top of survey data. We won't really cover GIS in these lectures, we'll be focusing on tying social or business data to spatial data and not worrying about land use or soil type. But this is a massive area, so if you get really into spatial data analysis, you'll probably have to learn something about GIS in the future.